Now we look at a little bit more sophisticated sequential logic storage device known as the SR latch. So this all begins with this whole notion of sequential logic storage devices. It begins with the cross-coupled inverter pair. Okay, so cross-coupled inverter pairs are base storage element, this architecture of just taking two inverters and feeding their, their outputs back to the input of the other one. So this is the cross-coupled inverter. And that's the base element. Now, what we want to do when we look at sequential logic storage devices is we want to make modifications to that cross-coupled inverter pair in order to improve it and get more sophisticated. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through a whole bunch of interim steps, okay, a whole bunch of interim circuits until we get to the ultimate circuit, which is actually going to be called the D flip-flop. Okay, so the D flip, I'll be an I, flip-flop. Okay, so the D flip flop is what is in use today. This is what all digital systems, or yeah, what all digital systems use is the D flip flop, and that's what we ultimately want to get to. But to get there, to understand how you build a D flip flop, you have to walk through all these different steps. And so the first step that we do is we take a cross couple inverter and we modify it to become an SR latch. And then what we'll do is we'll modify that to be an SR S bar R bar latch and then we'll modify that to be a uh, SR latch with enable and then we'll make a uh, D we'll make a D latch and then finally we get to the D flip flop. So each one of these little steps makes a modification to this but ultimately where we're going is to create the D flip flop which is the primary storage device used. Okay. So let's start talking about an SR latch. One of the biggest problems with the cross-coupled inverter is that it didn't have any inputs. We kind of implied that, well, if I force a value in the input of one of the inverters, it will hold a value. But the question is, how do I force that value? Okay, so we need some way to drive in a value in order to tell it what to store. So the first thing we can do is we can replace the inverters with NOR dates. So here's what the topology of an SR latch is. So this is an S our latch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two NOR gates and I'm going to put them in a configuration that has a cross-coupled feedback loop. And I'm going to do that by taking the output of the first NOR gate and I'm going to feed it back to this NOR gate. And then I take the output of the second NOR gate and I'm going to feed it back to this. And now notice that I have a feedback loop and I've got Q and I've got QN again. But I also have these two inputs, and I'm going to name these inputs R, and I'm going to name them S, and we'll see why. Well, I'll just tell you why. S stands for set, and R stands for reset. And so what we want to do is walk through the behavior of this, of this SR latch when you change the values of S and R. Okay, so to begin with, we want to make sure that this SR latch actually stores information. So what we can do is, let's evaluate when S is equal to zero and R is equal to zero. And the kind of the hypothesis here is this will store information, okay? I can tell you, I jumped at the punchline here, is that it does store, but we want to verify that it actually does. So here's what I want to do. Let's go ahead and put zeros, let's redraw our, our SR latch, and we'll go ahead and put zeros on the inputs here. So I'm going to have R is equal to zero and S is equal to zero. And what I want to do is say, okay, what is it going to store? All right. Well, it turns out we want to look at the truth table for a NOR gate. So let's take, let's come up here and let's look at the NOR gate. So we have zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. And the output is going to be one, zero, zero, zero. So what's of interest about this is that the only time you ever have a 1 is when you have both inputs as a 0. And you will always have a 0 when, you, when any of the inputs have a 1. So the inputs have a 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at, well, if I'm storing, I need to be able to store both states, right? So let's take a look at trying to store a, store a 0. So let's say that I had a zero right there, and what I want to do is look and see if it will hold that zero. So the zero is then fed back to here, and I have a zero, and look at what I got here. I now have a known state, I have zero and a zero, and that corresponds to an output of a one. Well, that one is driven back into this 
S or this NOR gate. Now I have a 1 on the inputs that reinforces the 0, and it indeed stores a 0. So this stores a 0. So this stores a 0. That's a big deal. So now let's take a look at, let's do this exact same thing, except this time I want to see if it'll store a 1. So let me draw the cross-coupled feedback loop there. And I'm going to have a 0 on the input R and a 0 on the input S. And this time I'm going to say, okay, what if we would have started with a 1? Okay. Well, let's take a look. 1 is driven back to here, and now I have a 1 on the input of, an, of a NOR gate. Well, that means the output will for sure be a 0. Then I have a 0 fed back to this NOR gate, and the inputs to this NOR gate is 0 and 0. That for sure drives a 1, which reinforces the 1. This indeed stores a 1. Okay, so we have a situation where we can store information. This is great. It acts exactly like cross-couple inverter pair. But who cares, right? I mean, let's, we, the whole point of this was to try to put some inputs in here. So let's take a look at what happens when I do drive the inputs. So let's come over here and let's see what happens when I, I do S is equal to 1 and I'll draw that. R is equal to, one, to 0. So let's see what happens when I do that. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw my loop again. So I got my NOR gate and my NOR gate. And then I have boom. This comes over here. This goes right here. Boom, boom, boom. And now I had R is equal to 0 and S is equal to a 1. Now this is important because whenever you have a 1 on one of the inputs, you know what the output of the NOR gate will be. So the NOR gate here will be... A zero. So that one right there, it doesn't matter what the other input is, the output will be a zero. When you take a zero back to this other NOR gate, now you have a zero and a zero, well that output is going to be a one. That one comes back to here, it didn't even matter what it was, but you, you are in the one one situation and you have a zero here, and it sits there. So now this is where Q is equal to one and QN is equal to zero. Well this is what we call the set state. And the reason it's called the set state is because you took Q to a 1. So setting means the output goes to a 1. All right? So this is great. We can change the output to a 1, and Q bar was nice because it did the exact opposite. Okay, well, that's great. Let's take a look at the other case, which is going to be S is equal to 0 and R is equal to a 1. And you can kind of guess what this is, but let's walk through it. So let's draw our NOR gate, cross couple and cross coupled configuration right here. We got this, comes back here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say, okay, now I want R to be equal to a 1. I want S equal to a 0. So here's the big situation. Whenever you have a 1, that's what dictates the output. So an R is equal to a 1. That causes this output to go to a 0 no matter what. That 0 is fed back to here. Well, look at what I got here. I got 0 and 0 on a NOR gate. The output here is a 1. That 1 is fed back here. It didn't even matter because anytime you have any 1s on a NOR gate, the output is 0. And look what happened. It, driv it, it drove it to this state. Well, that's great. This is called, so this is when Q is equal to 0 and this is where QN is equal to 1. This is called the reset state. And the reset, it's a term that defines when the output goes to a 0. So that's what reset means. So this, the S and the R of the SR latch stand for set and reset. So this is fantastic. We have this cross-coupled circuit. We have inputs to it, and we can put it into a store state. We can put it into a set state. We can put it into a reset state. So the real remaining question is, well, what about that last code that we have? Well, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at that last code. So the last code that we have is when S is equal to a zero and R is equal to a zero. No, I'm sorry. When S is equal to a one and R is equal to a one. So you say, well, what happens here? Well, okay, let's draw it. We go boom, boom, boom. And you got your NOR gates. And they're, got, they're in their cross-coupled feedback loop. And then this comes over here. And what we have is we have R is equal to a 1 and S is equal to a 1. Well, this is fine because anytime you got a 1 on a NOR gate, the output is a 0. So the outputs will both go to a 0 and it will just sit there. The zeros are fed back to here. They really have no impact because anytime you got a 1 on, on the input to a NOR gate, the output's a 0. 
So this is an interesting state. Now, we don't like this state, and we actually call it the don't use state. And there's a couple of reasons. So first of all, you've got Q and Q bar, which are no longer inversions of each other. So we've kind of uh, gone against one of the advantages of having Q and Q bar. They're not inversions, so that, doesn't, that isn't good. The other problem with this is that if you went from this don't use state and you went into the set state, it really wouldn't matter because the outputs would just go to Q is equal to 1. If you went into the reset state, that wouldn't really matter either because Q would go to a 0. The problem becomes this. When you go from the don't use state into the store state, the question becomes the NOR gate, the SR latch, will go to one of these stable states. It will go to where Q is a 0 or Q is a 1, and QN is the opposite of that. So it's going to go to one of these, no matter what. It will go to one of these two stable states. However, you have no idea where it's going to go. You know it's going to go to one of them, you just don't know which one it's going to go to. So this is why we don't use it, because you could be put into a situation where you have no idea what the output of the circuit will ultimately be. So this is no good. We don't like this. We don't want to use it. So that's the don't use. So this, we can summarize this entire behavior of the SR latch in a truth table. And it's, it's a truth table, but it's got storage involved in it now. So let's take a look at what the final table looks like for the SR latch. So this is our circuit. And 0 and 0 is the store state. Sometimes we call it the hold state, but it holds whatever Q and QN were. So you put them in some value, at some values and it just holds them. When you go into S is 0, R is 1, you, you are in the reset state. And the reason you're in the reset state, the way the logic works on this is R is, is a 1, R is asserted. So since I didn't put like R bar or R not, a 1 means that I'm asserting R. So I'm in the reset state. And reset, of course, means that the output goes to 0. Then when I go into the 1, 0, or S is 1, R is 0, that's the set state. And that means that the output will go to a 1. Then we go to this, the last code, which is S is 1, R is 1. We call that the don't use. It does drive it to one, a known value, but we don't like the known value because if we went from the don't use back into the store, we have no idea what value it's going to land on. Okay? So that's the, that's the overview of an SR latch.